does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! We are back again today for another episode of Bower Plays, another special Game Crafter Spotlights edition of Bower Plays. I'm here with my eight-year-old son, Sean. Hello! And we're going to be talking about Turris, City of Giants, which is on the Game Crafter. I'll post a link down below. It is a micro game. We got it all set up, and that is the rules right there, which I think is really kind of nifty. And I have decided to be the Tower of Dastardly Deeds, which shows that I will have I will start with three meeples over here. And uh, I am on the green team, which Sean is also, but we're not on a team. And then, Sean, what do you got over here? I got one victory point. Yeah, so this weight-looking symbol right here means that Sean will have a victory point at the end of the game, and also you start with two meeples. Now, the game does not come with these particular components right here. The, game, uh, the rules say, hey, just throw in anything that you want to use. You need, like, five to seven of them. So we have shuffled up all these cards right here. We've dealt two cards to each player. We've put two cards in the center to be the marketplace. And we have set this top card right here to darkness. And one thing that you need to know before we get started is the game is going to end when all the cards in this pile and all the cards right here are gone. And we both have the same number of turns. So we need to figure out who's going to go first. You want to flip a coin to see who goes yep. first? You have uh, the crown or the tree? Crown. All right. Crown. It's a tree. Sean can go first. So, the other thing is, uh, this card right here says we are on darkness. If this is on darkness at the end of the game, then everyone loses the game. Uh, otherwise, if it's on a specific color, that person of that color will get uh, bonus points. So, for instance, uh, right now, if one of us were red, we would have two victory points, assuming this didn't change, and we would also have plus one attack, but we'll get more into how that works a little bit later. So, you ready, Sean? Uh -huh. So, on your turn, you are going to do two things. And you can only do uh, something one time, but you can do two different things. The things you can do are draw a card mm -hmm. from the marketplace and add it to your hand. So, draw a card right here and then replace it with another card. You can play a card from your hand onto your tower right here. And you'll see all the cards are double-sided, so they will do something different on each side. And once you commit it, boom, like that... That other side is gone, but now your tower is a little bit upgraded, and we'll go through those cards when we get to them. So draw a card, play a card, remove a follower, and once again, these are your followers, and these are my followers, and you do that uh, typically to strengthen an attack, which we'll talk a little bit about later, but most of the time to do an action on a card. So like this one says uh, observatory, and then it has a meeple, which means if you take something off of here, then you can launch an attack. So it's kind of like doing an action. And then last but not least, you can just get rid of one of your cards, just discard it to a pile that will be right here, and you gain a follower. And once again, that's going to be good for doing actions and also doing the attacking. So, two actions, Sean, what you're going to do, and you also want to take a look at your cards as well. And I'll take a look at my cards. So you look at yours, and I'll, I'll take a look at mine, I'll show mine. So we have, uh, we got two, two red and two yellow. So this one, oh, so this is one that says... Uh, take off a meeple requires three energy, but add a card from the opponent's towers to yours. Discard this card. Wow, that lets me steal a card. But it requires I have three energy, which is this blue symbol. And right now I have zero. So that would be very difficult the game because this is a really short game. So, Sean, hopefully I stalled long enough. Do you know what you want to do on your turn, good sir? Draw yeah. a card, play a card, remove... Or, yeah, probably those ones. I'm going to play this work. Shop. All right, going with the science. Okay, gain. You want to read it? I gain two influence, which is again the uh, this victory points. Yeah. Um. For each machine in your tower at the end of the game, and a machine is probably going to be a very specific type of card that Sean is going to be looking for. Uh, so that's yeah. your first action. And now this also improves the defense uh, of this little building right here because I would want to destroy that building, but it's got some good defense at four defense. We'll, we'll get into the defense and the attacking a little bit later. Okay, and I'm going to... Draw a card. Which one are you taking? So if either of those are machine, it'd be kind of a no-brainer, but I doubt they are. I'll take the observatory. So this immediately gets replaced, and that goes into his hand, and now it is my turn. So I probably should have looked at these a little bit better. Ooh, you know what? We're going to go, we're going yellow hard. So I'm going to put out this ritual circle, which is going to uh, 
require me to take off a meeple, and I need three energy to do it. But right now I have one energy. Plus, this is a pretty heavily fortified area. So even if Sean might want to destroy this, it has five defense. So I played a card, and then what do I want to buy? Let's see, are we going yellow? Ooh, this one lets me change the influence wheel, and it gives me a meeple, and it gives me a victory point. That's pretty exciting. But this one, machine. Uh, so, oh, this is a machine. Oh, Sean should have played this one. So am I, be, am I playing nice or am I playing mean, Sean? You know what? We're going to play nice. Plus, I also thought this card looked really good. But that's a machine. I would highly recommend picking that one up and building it because it's two points to you. And it also does something else. So and I think that was one that you just didn't notice. Yeah. And that's why always when we play games like this, you want to make sure you read everything. Because that's like if I were playing Mean Dad, I'd be like, nope. No two points for you. <laughs> That's what you would do on game night. That is totally what I do at game night, and then I would rub it in their face because that's kind of how we play games. We don't do it in a mean way. Everybody knows we're all having fun. So, mm -hmm. replace it immediately. I've taken my two actions, and now it's your turn. Oh, Dad, by the way, if you wanted to go yellow hard, then why did you just... But then why did you choose the Tower of Dastardly Deeds and not the Tower of the Serpent? Because I wasn't planning on going yellow hard until I saw this awesome ritual circle card that I got. And that's one of the other farts I love about strategy games is adjusting your play during the middle of the game. All right, picking it up, immediately playing it. Does it even know what to do? Wait, I'm not going to be able to play. Let's see, it's a machine, and one meeple requires free energy. My attacks are, have, are two... Plus two strengths this turn. Uh, so, yeah, you can play it right now if you want. You don't have to, but you can. I'll see yeah. it. Because if you put that out there, that's going to be a target for me. You know, it's like, ooh, I want to destroy that. Whereas, if you just hold it in your hand, you might be able to play it later. So you drew a card. We immediately replace it. That's your first action. I'm going to do... I'm going to play this Fortified Post. The card below this may not be targeted or attacked as mm, long as this is here. So that's really smart. So essentially, if I want to attack that one, which I know is probably going to be a couple points for you, I have to blow up this thing first, which has six defense, which is the best defense we've seen so far. And then I have to do that. So that was a smart play. It's What do I want to do? Change the influence wheel? Ooh, I can get rid of a meeple to taste. Yeah, let's do that. Boom. So, uh, I now have two energy, and I gain a meeple, because this one has... Oh, and Sean, you should have gained a meeple right there, too, because you played one. Because you gained that part immediately. So, I gain a meeple. I'm up to four. And then I cannot trigger my ritual circle yet, because I don't have three influence, but I could change the wheel. Ooh, what's that do? You may draw a card when you turn to mysticism. I do like drawing cards. Yeah, we're going to turn from darkness, because I don't want us all to lose the game, to mysticism. And even though I'm not yellow, I still get to draw a card. And let's see. Boy, howdy. A magic portal. Ooh, that one's fun. Let's maybe, see. I'm maybe. going all crazy yellow up in here. Maybe you're like scientists trying to bring ritual weird guys into our realm. Oop, I almost forgot to use the meeple. So I take this meeple off, I trigger that, and that's my action. That might be who I am. All right, your turn, Sean. What's the plan? I'm taking this this heliport slash laboratory. Okay, so you drew your first card. What's your second action? <clears throat> and, hmm. yeah, so that that's like be really good. But then again, this side is good too. Decisions, decisions. <laughs> Science cards are defense one. Ooh. So this is instead of four, five. So you oh. also got that's a great card because that's going to be when you do a five, if you do end up attacking, you're going to do one extra damage. You get a victory point, five defense, you get an energy, and 
Science cards, defense plus one. Solid, solid play. Yeah, and uh, so this is extra protected. Mmm, it is. By this and the other. <laughs> no, that's not what I want. We're going to go ahead and... We're going to go ahead and get this one. And then I'm going to play it. I'm, I'm not a warfare guy. I, I might use warfare. Fair. Says the dude with the fortified post. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm just protecting my workshop. Okay. okay. At least I'm not trying to bring crazy, inhuman, nonsense guys with science to our realm. That's fair. Oh, I can't even. Oh, no. I... I am a noob. You did a great job defending yourself. You want to know why? Well, I'll tell you when it's when your turn's up. Because okay. I don't because I don't want you to focus on what I'm gonna say. But I just made a very bad play. Catacombs. All right. Slash armory. And then what you doing for your second action? Oh, oh my. I'm going to use this. I'm going to place this. Uh huh. And let's see how much. Uh, so it's machine, so you get a meeple, and it gives you plus one attack. Other than that, it doesn't do anything. All right, so what to do? We will go with this one, and then I'm going to play this one, which gives me a meeple. What's your bad mistake? My bad mistake was that I specifically took the time to play this barracks card so I could attack you, Right? Mm -hmm. But you can only attack the first floor of someone's building unless you happen to have a symbol that looks like, where is it, like this one, which adds more range. So, for instance, thematically, I'm pretty sure, you know, if I have more range, it's like I have archers so I can shoot the second or the third or the fourth floor. But the problem Ooh. is I can't actually attack this. So this card is completely useless unless I get a range card as well. And that is why I was, oof, shouldn't have played that card. Oof. And that, yes. So now it's your turn. Let's see. I will say, there's definitely more strategy to this than I think we had, uh, than we had last time. I'm taking... Would you agree with that or no? Yeah, I'm taking the game. Oh, and the game's just about over. So never mind. That's, that's, <laughs> that's one of the things I remembered. It ends very quickly. Uh, which means my decision to put this barracks here is like the kind of decision that might lose me the game. All right. Guildhall, change the influence wheel to take one off. Okay, and two victory points. Oh, bananas, bananas. This is not looking good for poor daddy -o. You went first, right? <gasps> no! God! God! Duh! Okay. Your dad has lost the game, I do believe. Well, still go on. I will, I will, but would you like to hear how? Are you interested? Yes. So, first thing, I needed range. I needed range so, so I could attack somehow, right? Mm -hmm. No range here, no range in my hands, which means I will not be able to attack you. Secondly, I was really excited to play this card on you. You were going to be so mad. So... The Demon Gate destroys all cards of the same color. Bing, bang, boom. I would have destroyed all three of your green cards. But I needed four energy, and I only have three energy! So there's no energy, there's no range, and that's what I needed. And so now, I have the move of, like, what do I even do? Wait, do these? Nope. Is that? Nope. Those doesn't, that, that adds more attack, it doesn't have range, so yeah, I think... I think your dad's in trouble. So let's see. Any of these going to help? Change the influence wheel? No. Add a card for opponent's towers. Well, yeah, you know what? We're going to do that. Uh, so we're going to use a ritual circle. Take this off and 
add a card from your opponent's towers to yours, and then discard this card. Ooh, I can take away this defense. Or, oh my gosh, I could. Wow, so there's some... The defense would be good if you want to protect your stupid wheel. Don't call my wheel stupid. So I just stole your fortified post. But now at the cost of this being gone. Oof. Yeah, I don't know if it's really that great. But now I do want to launch an attack. To Let's where? go. Oh, you want to take out my workshop? Yes. Yeah, so like uh, four. Your science card's a defense, so it's a five. Uh, do you have any more defense? No, I don't think so. So I would need, I don't, I can't even do it. So look, I have one, two, three, four, if I take all those off. So I can't even, you're dead. Yeah. All right, my, is it my turn? I still have one more action. Dad's just going to draw a card, a sad card. Your turn. Sad dad. I'm going to do this to change the influence wheel to science, and my science structures get two plus defense, and I get two influence. Well... In all fairness, we both get two influence, and my side, yeah, so it's not, but if you are trying to protect yourself from attack, yeah, that's a good move. Since you know I'm probably going to try to attack you, that's actually a really great play, I'd say. And you took the last card, which means the game will end after my next turn, which I think was a smart move. If you think you're about to win the game, you know what you should be trying to do? Hmm. End the game. <laughs> like, that's the best strategy. Like, if you don't mess around, don't try and see if you can get to a billion points, you end that game. Crush their hearts. Let's see if I can crush your heart right now in a last second play. I don't think so. Launch an attack. That'll give you plus one strength, which means I. Oh, okay. Increase the defense. Of the yeah, so we're going to try this. We'll, we'll try and make it interesting. This throne loom is really good. So, oh, I, so that's going to be plus one attack, plus two attack, plus three, plus four attack, which means, I think I just have to reach this. Let me double check. Uh, combined, if you equal. Yeah. What? Oh, your science labs are D plus plus one. No! That would, might, might have been the play that changed the game. He's like Good. That was great. You know what? You shouldn't have even pointed it out. What you should have done is let me do it and let me think I beat you. And they'd be like, uh, actually, Dad, I got the defense. But that's just me. I like to, I like to do little stuff like that. When people think they're about to win and be like, actually, bro, boom. That's one of my favorite parts about games. Uh, okay. So I don't think there's anything I can do, so I'll just try and get points here. Uh, but there's not even a thing that's gonna... This is all stinky. <laughs> stinky. There we go. Which means game over, and we're going to total up the number of victory points. So we both get two. So you don't even have to count that two. Um, I have four points. So you have... Seven. Two, three, plus you still have that machine. Boom. Uh, so game plus two influence for each... Oh, eight. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So seven, eight grand total... Whereas I only have one, two, four, six. Good game. Boom. But that is Tourist City of Giants. If it looks like it might be a cup of tea, we're going to the market for a new micro game. Be sure to check that one out. Also, if you ever dreamed of making your own micro game, the only place you need to go is the Game Crafter. You can make boxes like this. You can make mint tins. They got tiny boxes. They got big boxes. They got micro cards. They got components. It's amazing. Have I ever showed you the Game Crafter, Sean? Nope. I should show you sometime. It's just incredible the amount of components. Because that was it. This was somebody's dream, and they printed it off, and they made it, and it's just so cool. Uh, but yeah, Tourist City of Giants, check that one out. If it looks like it might become tea, as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Oh, and Sean, do you have a question in the comments below? Yeah. If you could ma make your own special room in in your house that you, that you, you only have access to, what would it be? Hmm. You want me to go first? Yeah. Only me. Can I at least let other people in? Yeah. Or, okay, so it's like it could be a secret room or it could not be. I would like to have a super secret. Oh, this would be perfect. You know what I want? Hmm. I want a basement below my basement. 
Because one of the biggest problems we have with our basement is that anybody walks upstairs, if the dog runs around, if somebody yells or the doorbell rings, it makes the sound really loud, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So I would love to have a basement. Below my basement would be my special secret super studio where I would just shoot things. And it needs to have great internet too. So yeah, that. So that'd be my room. My room. Plus I'd have more room for games. <gasps> uh... You had plenty of time to think there, partner. My Mine would be, my, it would be, it would have, it would be a, a cool gaming room. There would be like a VR set. Um, mm, big open space then, so you can do all sorts of crazy, oh, oh, you know what you should get? Huh. You should get one of the, uh, the running machines. Have I ever showed you the running machines where you can actually like run, they let you run while you're doing VR? No. Yeah, they're amazing. I'll show them to you sometime. Uh, so, so there would be, la, so I, I had. So there would be like a VR, a uh, there would be an Xbox Series X, a place, a PS Five, um, a a giant, what a twenty inch plasma TV. The, the TV we have upstairs, I believe, is 52 inches. Oh, wait. So 20 inches would be about the size of my computer monitor. All right. All right. So, um... Which actually, might be cool to have a bunch of those, too, because then everybody could have their own individual TV. So you might just want some extra ones down there. Wait, actually, 60-inch plasma TV. Oh, you're trying to one-up your dad? No, I just That's want all right. a it's your big... Room. I just want a big gaming screen. Okay, okay. That sounds like a pretty cool room. Um, oh, there's more. And... Mini fridge. Get the mini fridge. <laughs> well, yeah, mini fridge. I like how you're just like, of course, mini fridge, Dad. Uh, a, so a soft serve machine. Oh, my gosh. I want to go. A, a soda machine. For f like, like the kind we get at Wendy's where there's like a million different flavors to pick from? Yeah. Oh, that's the best. And finally. And Adam hates those. Why? He says the soda doesn't taste as good. He's right. The soda doesn't taste as good, but I like the variety better. Um, what? And then, and finally there's like, there's this, it's a little thing in the room where you don't even have to have VR goggles, just there's a little Xbox in the room and if you just turn it you just do a game and, like, it kind of tricks your body into thinking you're there. Oh, cool. So, so it's like, you're, it's a VR without VR goggles. That's cool, buddy. But I think you have reached the, uh, the text limit of the amount of things you can put in the comments down below. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below what secret room do you want. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.